Hey there, friends. Happy Monday. It's Pastor Jason here. I'm glad you can join me for Daily Devotionals. Today's going to be a little different. It's going to be a twofer. I already recorded Chapter 5 because I forgot to do Chapter 4, so I think maybe I'll just put them together for you today. So let me pray. We'll get right to it. We'll comment on 4 and 5 as well. Father, thank you for your love and grace, for the Holy Spirit in our lives. Thank you for the encouragement that First Thessalonians is. May we be an encouragement to those around us. We thank you and praise you in your name. Amen. Here we go. Chapter 4, verse 1. Finally then, brothers, we ask and encourage you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you must walk and please God as you are doing, do so even more. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is God's will, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality so that each of you knows how to control his own body in sanctification and honor, not with lustful desires like the Gentiles who don't know God. This means one must not transgress against and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger of all these offenses, as we also previously told and warned you. For God has not called us to impurity, but to sanctification. Therefore, the person who rejects this does not reject man, but God who also gives you his Holy Spirit. About brotherly love. You don't need me to write to you because you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. In fact, you are doing this toward all the brothers in the entire region of Macedonia. But when we encourage you, brothers, to do so even more, to seek to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, so that you may walk properly in the presence of outsiders and not be dependent on anyone. We don't, do not want you to be uninformed brothers concerning those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve like the rest, who have no hope, since we believe that Jesus died and rose again. In the same way, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep through Jesus. For we say this to you by a revelation from the Lord, we who are still alive at the Lord's coming will certainly have no advantage over those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with a, the archangel's voice, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are still alive will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Chapter 4, quickly I'll comment that, again, just a wonderful encouragement. And we definitely get this distinction that we should be walking in light and not in darkness. That there, just because you've accepted Christ doesn't mean that you can go on living how you've been living. We are called to righteousness. We are called to humility. We are called to meekness, to lead a quiet life, to be uh, working with our own hands like these sorts of things where not only are we avoiding sin, but that we're also doing things of righteousness that shine a light on being Christ-like. And also you start to get this little, you get a little hint of second coming. And you know, right now a lot of people are throwing around what the second coming will look like. And, you know, you get some things here in chapters four and five. And hopefully the Spirit gives you wisdom in those things. As a matter of fact, let's read chapter 5 right now, and then we'll comment and close those on that. So here's that second video that I recorded here just a minute ago. Hey there, friends. It's Pastor Jason. I'm glad you can join me today for our daily devotionals in 1 Thessalonians. Today we wrap it up with chapter 5. Great encouraging book, 1 Thessalonians. I hope it's been encouraging to you, and I hope it's encouraged you to go out and encourage others. Let me pray, and we'll wrap it up. Father, thank you so much for your love and patience in our lives. May we love you and honor you and cherish you. We just thank you and praise you in your name. Amen. Here we go. Verse 1. About the times and the seasons. Brothers, you don't need anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know 
very well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. When they say peace and security, then sudden destruction comes on them, like labor pains come on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers, are not in the dark for this day to overtake you like a thief. For you are all sons of light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or the darkness. So then we must not sleep like the rest and those, uh, but must stay awake and be serious. For those who sleep, sleep at night and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, we must be serious and put the armor of faith and love on our chests and put on a helmet of the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as you are doing, as you are already doing, excuse me. Now, we ask you, brothers, to give recognition to those who labor among you and lead you in the Lord and admonish you and regard them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we exhort you, brothers, warn those who are irresponsible, comfort the discouraged, help the weak, be patient with everyone. See to it that no one repays evil for evil to anyone but always pursue what is good for one another and for all. Rejoice always, pray constantly, give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Don't stifle the spirit, don't despise prophecies, but test all things, hold on to what is good, stay away from every kind of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your spirit, soul, and body be kept sound and blameless, blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. Brothers, pay, pray for us also. Greet all the brothers with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this letter be read to all the brothers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And so ends First Thessalonians. Great book. I love how encouraging Paul is with the Thessalonians in this letter from beginning to end. And I, if verses 12 through 22 aren't a call for our church today, may we as Christian brothers and sisters, no matter where you're watching this, may we take heed to verses 12 through 22. May we labor to make sure that we are warning those who are responsible, comfort the discouraged, help the weak, and be patient with everyone. That we're not repaying evil to evil to anyone, but always pursuing what is good for one another and for all. And then, of course, rejoicing always, praying constantly, give thanks for everything. I mean, these are all, I mean, don't stifle the spirit, don't despise prophecies, test all things, hold on to what's good, stay away from every kind of evil. These are great things to be applying to our lives, individually, as well as a whole, as our churches. Our churches should be about this as well. I hope this last chapter of First Thessalonians has been a blessing to you. Go on out, encourage someone, be a blessing to someone today. And I look forward to hearing about it from you. Tomorrow, we will start 2 Thessalonians. Quick book, 2 Thessalonians. But we'll start that with chapter 1 tomorrow. See you then.